Yes, we are back at Republica Berlin and uh, here we met Nanjala. Nanjala, would you short present yourself in a few words? Um, my name is Nanjala Nyabola and I am a writer and a political analyst and an independent researcher based in Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Angela. Uh, I saw you giving a talk on uh, digital democracy, and I'm sure you you're a good person to answer the question I have. Uh, the question is, uh, what is your vision of a good digital society? That's a great question. I think my vision of a good digital society is one where the citizen remains the most important. Um, cornerstone and where the rights of the citizen, the interests of the citizen, the safety of the citizen remains extra incredibly important to the system. So really the, the fundamental questions of political theory, whether you're talking about digital or analog, they remain the same. How do we prevent um, states from having too much power? over citizens' lives and citizens' privacy? How do we enable the success of the citizen? How do we enable the success of communities? Those questions remain the same. I think to me, the successful digital um, um, space, the digital society is one that continues to drive and push towards protecting the rights, the interests, the uh, well-being of the citizen um, at all costs. And uh, uh, talking of a well-being for citizens, uh, do you think that citizenship has changed through digitality or globalization? Well, my research focuses primarily on Kenya. And what we've seen in Kenya is that there have been some significant shifts. Um, on one hand, because we were looking at a society that has moved from authoritarianism to a more open uh, system that's still trying to adjust to being a more open system, we're seeing an increased level of participation. We're seeing people being able to speak directly to power instead of having to navigate this complex bureaucracy. And of course that challenges the role of the bureaucracy, right, who have always seen themselves as kind of the intermediary between the citizen and the state. And now they have to adapt. Now they have to make sure that the citizen complaint doesn't go directly to the president and you know circumvent the ministry and the systems that the ministry has put in place in order to be that kind of middle ground. So we've seen a lot of that. Um, we've seen a lot of people redefining communities and redefining communities in ways that make sense for them. Um, so we, we had a very, as I said, centralized authoritarian state that had a very clear narrative on the history and the politics of the country and said, you know, this uh, community needs to relate to this community in this way. We had a very, I would say, a made up uh, history that we were forced to accept as a form of nation building. But now we're seeing a lot of people getting rid of that. And so, for example, when you think about LGBTQ Kenyans and how, you know, the, the, the narrative has always been, quote unquote, this is an African and that there isn't any representation in the traditional media and there isn't any representation in popular culture. We've seen LGBTQ Kenyans going online, building new communities, being visible and demanding visibility and inclusion in a way that wasn't really possible, you know, 10, 15 years ago. These are all things that the digital has made possible because of the ways in which it circumvents power. But, you know, we've also seen a backlash and we've also seen um, the influence of money and power in electoral systems undermining um, networks and the mining systems, the electoral system, for example, the voting system, you know, being undermined by foreign corporate interests, by local corporate interests, in a way that wasn't really possible when it was analog, because it didn't depend on money in such an explicit way. So it's been a mixture of both, but we're definitely seeing the digital um, making space for new ways of thinking about the role of the citizen and the role of the state. So would you say that digitality is a chance for things like democracy, visibility, inclusiveness? I think, and I always make sure to say this, I'm neither a tech optimist or a tech pessimist. I try to be a tech realist. And I think as a tech realist, I have to say, it's all going to depend on what people decide. 
they want these platforms to represent. It's all going to depend on the decisions that we make over the coming years. How much we want to hold tech companies accountable, what standards we want to be integrated into the platforms that we're using, what we want these platforms to represent. It's really all going to come down to the agency and to the decision making of both individuals and institutions. Um, the tech platforms in themselves, you know, you're not going to say that because we're writing by email and instead of writing by pencil that human beings have changed in such a fundamental way that we can't recognize ourselves from who we were before. I think that's a bit, we have to sort of take in the human side of it and the human input and influence in all of this. Yes, of course, we stay human beings, yes. <laughs> yes. even in digital. Yes. And uh, I like the term with a cyber uh, digital yeah. realist. We, yeah. I have been in a talk in Albania where the question was whether a cyber realist is an optimist or a pessimist. It's not, a, it's not an optimistic or a pessimistic thing. I think it's looking at the facts and telling the stories. And that's what I try to do. I try to look at the facts and bring in as many facts as possible and you know, bring in history and philosophy and all of these different things and, and try to ask the question, um, what is the lay of the land? Um, because I think if we, be, if we are too optimistic, we were too optimistic for 10 years. Yeah. And we yeah. allowed all of these awful things to happen because we kept focusing on the optimism. And now we're going through a cycle of pessimism whereby we're not paying attention to the good things that happen. We're not paying attention to the fact that, you know, in Senegal, in Kenya, in Nigeria, people use social media to hold the electoral commissions accountable for the results that were being posted. So uh, for me, a tech realist is someone who is more interested in the fact more interested in the lay of the land to allow us to make informed decisions about what we want the world to look like. Okay, thank you, Nanjala. A tech realist looking at the <laughs> facts and telling the stories. So that was really great. Thank, thank you. you. No worries. Thank you very much. Have a good day. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah.